All right, this is a screencast for the 3.4 to 3.6 quiz. So question one, uh, we have a two liter container will hold about four grams of which of the following gases at zero degrees Celsius and one ATM, one atmosphere. All right, so with this one, you wanna use uh, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And then you wanna solve for N, the number of moles. So N will be equal to PV divided by RT. Um, you can plug this in, one ATM for the pressure, uh, two liters is the volume. You can plug those in just as is. Um, we want uh, the temperature in Kelvin, so this has to be changed to 273 Kelvin. And then uh, pressure is in atmospheres, so then you want to use, um, you want to use 0 0.08206 uh, as our, our value because our pressure is in atmospheres. And when you solve this, then you end up with uh, 0.9 moles. So then um, you have to figure out, uh, you want to look at the molar masses of all these. And since uh, we, we have 0.9 moles and we know we have 4 grams of it, that tells us that we have, uh, that, that the substance has to have a molar mass of 44. And then CO2 is the one that fits that. All right, next, number two. When a sample of oxygen gas in a closed container of constant volume is heated until an absolute temperature is doubled, which of the following is also doubled? All right, so uh, temperature and pressure are directly proportional. So if the temperature doubles, the pressure is also going to double. Um, these other ones are, are not uh, not correct. So starting with E, the potential energy of the molecules, um, that, that's in the chemical bonds. We don't worry about that. The number of molecules, it's the same sample of oxygen, so you're not changing the number of molecules. Um, average velocity of the gas molecules, um, the... Uh, if you said average kinetic energy, that would work, but this is saying the average velocity. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared, so this wouldn't be doubling. Um, and then the density, the density it's going to be the same mass in the same volume, so the density of the gas isn't going to change either, so it's going to, it's going to be b. Okay, question three. All right, so we're taking uh, helium, nitrogen, and argon, and they all start off at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere and we're putting them all into the same container. So this is a Dalton's law where um, if you have a mixture of gases, the, the, the final pressure, the total pressure in the container is just the sum of their partial pressures. All right, so what we wanna do then is just figure out what's gonna be the pressure of each of these individual gases um, based on how they change, and then uh, just add those together. So um, we don't have to worry about the temperature. The temperature is staying the same, it's at zero, but all these gases are starting at one atmosphere. So when you have the four liters of helium, well, that's being put into an eight liter container. So if the volume is doubling, then the pressure is going to get cut in half. So the partial pressure of helium is going to be 0.5. And then you're going um, six liters of nitrogen into eight. So the pressure here would go from one to, to one and a quarter, 1.25 because the, the new volume is one and a quarter, it's 0.75. The original volume is 0.75 of the final, so you just take the, take the inverse of that, you get 1.25. And then 10 liters, um, now you pump that into a smaller container, so the, the pressure is gonna go up to 1.25. So then we add all those together, 1.25 for the argon, 0.75, and then uh, 0.5 from the helium, we end up with uh, 2.5 atmospheres. So letter C. All right, now this one's just an application of the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. So we want to find the pressure in atmospheres. So that tells us which, um, which R value to use. We have to use the 0 0.08206 or 0 0.0821 if you round it off to three sig figs. Um, we have uh, the number of moles, so that's going to be N. We have the volume is in liters, and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So you'd have add 273 to that, it'd have to be 308. So we want to find pressure, so that's going to be equal to uh, NRT divided by the volume. So um, we have to make sure the temperature is correct. So it's going to be it's going to be letter A right here would be the setup. It'd be NRT divided by the volume right there. 
Question 5. At standard temperature and pressure, 0.5 mole sample of H2 gas and a separate 1 mole sample of O2 gas have the same. Um, it's going to be, they both have the same temperature. So this is in the notes. If you have uh, two different gases at the same temperature, they're going to have the same average kinetic energy. So that's got to be letter A. Um, they'll have different speeds, though, because um, the, the, the different gases will have different uh, masses. The hydrogen is lighter, so it's going to be, it's going to have a higher average molecular speed. Question six. You have 0.5 mole sample of helium and a 0.5 mole sample of neon are placed in two 10 liter rigid containers at 25 degrees Celsius. Each container has a pinhole opening. Which of the gases, helium or neon, will escape faster through the pinhole and why? Um, this concept is effusion. Lighter gases will effuse faster than heavier gases because they're smaller and they tend to move faster. So it's easier for them to get through the little pinhole opening. Um, so helium is going to be, it will escape faster. So that's all, letter A is the only choice where it has helium. Helium will escape faster because the helium atoms are moving at a higher average speed than the neon atoms. They have the same kinetic energy, but helium's lighter, so they have to move faster. Question seven. Argon deviates more from ideal gas or ideal behavior at extremely high pressure than neon does. Which of the following is one reason for this difference? So, um, Ideal behavior assumes that the particles do not have volume and they don't um, exert forces on each other. So uh, letter A is the answer. The, the particle volume of argon is greater than that of neon. So that would make it deviate more. It'd be less ideal. Um, the, the rest of the choices like argon has the same number of valence electrons as neon. Um, intermolecular forces between neon atoms is greater. This is backwards. Argon would have stronger intramolecular forces. Argon atoms are more attractive to the wall of the container. That, that has nothing to do with this, uh, the, whether it's ideal or not. So it's letter A. Um, under which of the following conditions of temperature and pressure will hydrogen gas be expected to behave most like an ideal gas? So we want um, high temperature so that the particles are moving quickly and don't interact as much. And we want low pressure so the particles are spread apart and the, the interactions will be weaker and the volume of the particles will be less significant. So we want high temperature and low pressure. Letter C. High Kelvin temperature and atmospheres, that's your measure of pressure. And then question number nine, which of the following best helps explain why the pressure of a sample of CH4 it gives you the molar mass of 16 grams per mole is closer to the pressure predicted by the ideal gas law than a sample of NH3 molar mass of 17 grams per mole. So um, the predicted pressure by the ideal gas law, so this is saying that um, CH4 behaves more ideally than NH3. Or another way to look at it is NH3 deviates more from the ideal gas law than CH4. Okay, so the reason why, it's not based on size. They're both about the same size, 16 grams per mole. Um, CH4 is nonpolar, so it's only going to have weak London dispersion forces as their, their intermolecular forces. But NH3 has hydrogen bonding, because, so it's a polar molecule and it has hydrogen bonded to nitrogen, so it has hydrogen bonding, so it has much stronger interactions. So um, let's see, letter A, NH3 molecules are polar, while CH4 molecules are not. Then it has greater attractions between NH3, cause the molecules to collide with the walls of the container with less force. So that's, that's going to be the correct answer right there. Okay, And that's all for this quiz. Have a great day.